Welcome to the misty rainforests of Australia. You would think that a person like me would enjoy riding a motorcycle around this place, but no. I'm damn bored. And when a man's bored, he needs adventure. In my time, I've ridden a lot of motorcycles, but I haven't gone to a lot of places. I've been to New Zealand, a few places around Australia and the Himalayas. There was one place I visited in the Himalayas and it totally blew my mind. This place they call Ladakh, meaning the land of high passes. But if you visit this place in summer, it's like visiting a theme park for kids. It's always packed with tourists. I'm the kind of guy who's introverted. Humans piss me off. Traffic annoys me. Huge crowds make me feel uncomfortable and I can't be bothered being social. There's only one friend I need on my adventures, and that's my motorbike. I did my last trip in Ladakh solo, completely unassisted and alone. It was a beautiful adventure that I did close to winter. And because I hate large crowds, I plan to visit this place called Ladakh in winter. The problem with winter is you can replace the large crowds with extremely cold weather slippery roads and a shortage of resources and assistance if something goes wrong. I packed my bags. I took a flight from Sydney to Leh in Ladakh. The plan was that I would meet up with my friends Tundup and Bhavan. We would grab our motorcycles and we would go on one epic ride to the other side of India. I didn't know how we were going to do it, but we had to get out of Ladakh. And the problem with Ladakh in winter is that most of the roads closed down, but this was nothing that was going to stop us. We really had to do this trip. So if you're prepared for one massive struggle, keep watching. So it's 4.20 in the morning, there's like two hours before I board my flight, so obviously I came to my favourite place, McDonald's. On adventures like this, airports are exciting. A simple flight will take me from the city high into the Himalayas. Two and a half hours later, I landed in Leh Airport and there was a familiar face to welcome me. Yeah, man, let's go, man. <laughs> this is Tundup. We became friends on a previous trip. Hey man, thanks for grabbing my luggage for me. Come on, man. We're both highly excited because for the next few weeks we'll be tearing up the mountains on our motorcycles together. And that's probably why he's looking at me like a homosexual lover. And we have to, we have to think. Where's the final destination that you guys want to go? We're going to go to Manali and then from Manali, later Manali, 
we're gonna head to like Uttarakhand and Nepal and just have like the crazy Himalayan mountain adventure and then from there we'll come back via Shurinagar to Leh. Oh, man, I can't wait. Are you excited though? Yeah, me too. <laughs> The on-the-spot plan was to ride the entire Kashmir circular loop which would take about two weeks from Leh to Manali to Shirinagar and back to Leh again, a 2200 km journey. So immediately we had to start packing our bikes. I just landed two hours ago but we were so keen to get moving. My bike for the trip? A 411cc Royal Enfield Himalayan, built for adventure. Without wasting any time, we headed off straight to Manali, the first 550km stretch. Within just hours of the trip, I noticed Tundup was lagging behind, especially as we climbed up in altitude. There was a problem, which we had to stop to check out. Fuck, I'm struggling man, I went from like, altitude of like in Diddley, what's the altitude, like 400 meters high? Nothing, right? 400 meters high, 4,241 meters in one day, like, Fuck, man. <laughs> what was it? Uh, 4,241, that's how high we are. It was Tundup's bike. It was struggling to generate any power due to the carburetor and the high altitude. Let, let some smoke out, bro, just slow motion. Like a, like a badass, bro, like you're in a movie right now. I can't do it, man. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. I got some smoke. Yeah, man, let that smoke. Fuck yeah. Fuck what? Man, looking good, man. Give me a chuma, Johan. How about it? Man, you just fixed the carburetor in like, what, 15 minutes? Fuck, man, this guy is one smart, man. Genius and a genius over there. We're lighting some fires to stay warm. Have to stay warm up here. And we were off once again, nothing to stop us. It felt amazing gliding up these huge mountain passes. We were ascending up Taglangla, a 5,300 meter high pass. There were eagles soaring as the sun was setting over the horizon. But we had to hurry. We were running out of daylight and it was already freezing. At this point, I could barely feel my left leg and the altitude sickness was kicking in. At this point, my left leg was completely numb and then it all went drastically wrong. If you've ever heard of a thing called... See, I can't even talk properly right now because my brain got fucking pounded. So if you guys have ever heard of a place called 
Tag Langla Top, it's 5,300 meters. And if you know what altitude sickness is, it's something very real and very dangerous. And I should not have ignored the warnings that you should stay in lay for at least a few days when you get here so that your body can acclimatize and adapt to the high altitude. So I thought I'd spend the week I had free up here in Ladakh to film some awesome stuff, but sadly that's not going as planned because of the crazy weather. And I can't talk properly right now because my head still hurts and I feel like I've been permanently mentally disabled from that altitude sickness thing that I had. On the first day I made a very foolish mistake. That foolish mistake being I went from an altitude of 200 meters in Delhi to an altitude of 5,300 meters in Taglangla Top on the same day within about eight hours of each other. Now that is just a, such a crazy thing to do and I don't know why the hell I did it but I did. I made such a bad mistake and that mistake almost killed me. I had my brain was freaking swollen, Jesus Christ. My brain was swelling up, I had such a bad headache and it felt like my head was going to explode. Tundup came up with a really good idea. That was, he was going to take me from Leh to Shirinagar in the car. That's like the only way of traveling around at this time because it's too damn cold, there's no, there's no other way of doing it. And I was like, you know what, <laughs> that's a good idea Tundup, let's do it. So I found myself having to abandon my motorcycle out of necessity and ride along in the car so that we could get out of Ladakh. I had to get to my next destination, Amritsar, somehow. The luxuries and security that a car provide can only be understood by a motorcycle rider. Riding bikes sucks, especially when you're faced with ice cold temperatures and high altitudes. First tried to exit via the Manali route but bumped into a truck driver. He said that the road was closed due to the snowfall so we had to go the other way via Shirinagar. We got to Dras, which is the second coldest inhabited place in the world. But once again, due to snowfall, the police turned us back. We literally missed out we're crossing the check post by like five minutes. So now we're in snowy drafts and we're not allowed to go further ahead to the shoot. I think we're gonna to have to head back. The police won't let us go. 
Fuck. Fuck. Hang on. Why am I trying to escape Ladakh in the first place? Let's start from the beginning. The next day I was standing on top of the highest monastery in Ladakh and thinking to myself, why am I such a bitch that's trying to escape Ladakh? What, because it's cold? People travel thousands of kilometers to experience this. So let's make the most of it. Boom! So guess what? I've rehired the Himalayan. I'm no longer bitching out. I've built up some kind of strange immunity to the cold. And with that immunity, I'm gonna go tackle the fucking mountains. Look at me, I'm all decked up. I've got like four layers of pants on, four layers of jackets and thermals and all sorts of crap. I've got all my camera gear ready. I'm gonna go hit up some of the local sites tonight or this evening. And then I've got a few more days to film some more shit. I'm not gonna leave. I'm not gonna go to Delhi. I'm gonna do this, man. Minus five degrees right now. But I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah! So I got back on my bike and started riding to some of the most challenging destinations across an isolated desert. And then I started making my way to the world's highest road, Kadungla, at an altitude of 5,400 meters, almost two thirds the height of Mount Everest. I gave the police officer my permit and he warned me, if you're riding a motorcycle, don't go to the top. There's too much snow and you'll most likely get injured. It's too much snow, okay. Ah. But guess what? I went anyway. Yeah! Wow, so the police officer said there's snow and bikes aren't allowed, so there you go. But he's allowed me to go. Wow, see how I go. The police officer was not kidding. It is snowing up here. I'm just gonna let these uh, army trucks pass because I'm probably gonna be slipping all over the road. Man, man, I just saw the army trucks have got some pretty impressive um, chains on their tires, man. And here I am, crazy motherfucker, riding up to Kadungla with just some normal tires on some fucking snow. Woo! The worst thing would be, man, an instant fatality with me falling in front of a truck and my head getting squashed underneath that tire. That would be the worst. I'm doing a solid like 30 kilometers per hour up this snowman. It's fucking incredible. If you know me, man. Whoa, shit. Totally lost the back end just then, man. Fuck. And look at this. This is slippery ice and a fucking mountain edge right there. What the fuck's going on here? Whoa, 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 shit. And I just slipped there. Almost fell. Fuck! 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 Okay, 
fuck? And this is the first time I fell. How the fuck I get this bike out, man? And I need the help. How the fuck? Oh. Oh. Thanks. Thank you. Ready? Oh. The thing that's too hard is getting this fucking bike out when it falls on the ground in the snow because there's no traction, man. You're pushing it and pushing it and the, and the wheels keep slipping. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. See, look at that. Oh, fuck. Got my bike up. The road was way too slippery and I kept falling over. Not only was it highly dangerous, but my bike also stopped working. Hey man. Oh yes! And I'm gonna start it! Fucking clutch though. But fuck, it keeps turning off, see? No, no, don't, don't turn off. Fuck! Why? Oh man, Royal Enfield Himalayan, the best fucking adventure bike ever, man. Yeah, do your next adventure in the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Come on, man! Why the fuck are you not starting, cunt? What have I ever done to you? Go, 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 go. Go, man. There you go, look, I'm using my foot. We go, woo, we're skiing down this. We're skiing down the mountain, we're skiing. I'm no longer motorcycle riding, guys. I've changed adventure sports. I'm now skiing. I'm skiing down Kadungla. I'm gonna have to start here. Oh, and it starts up. Come on, first gear. Come on, oh no. Get back to skiing. I'm skiing again, guys, I'm skiing. Clutch is in. If I get stranded here overnight, and I have to walk back down. I will Sparta kick the fuck out of this motorbike off the side of that fucking cliff and I'll pay Tunda for the damages. So I came from all the way up there with that ice snowies. So the bike's fucked. It's not starting. I don't know what the hell the problem is. Unexpected errors. I've literally been rolling the bike in neutral gear all the way down from the top of Kadungla. That's a total of 35 kilometers from the top down to the bottom that I'll be rolling it. What a freaking joke. And I'm a, I asked the policeman, the police officer, I'm like, man, what do I do? And he's like, ah, oh, it's okay, you can roll the bike down. I'm like, man, if you think I can roll the bike down, then I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna continue rolling the bike down to the end. Have a look at this fucking shit. I'm no mechanic, right? But the bike should not have done this, look. Look, and the fucking electronic display keeps like going on and off. Come on, come on! Still rolling. I'm, I'm still rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled and down. <laughs> look who came in time. Fucking Tunda, the hero. Literally, I was just gonna leave the bike here and then I was gonna walk down there and get a taxi. So I borrowed a police officer's phone at the top, the same one that let me go through on the way back. And I was trying to call Tunda, but he didn't pick up. Then I told the police officer, if he calls back, just let him know what I'm doing. And just by chance, like literally best timing, I get here, I'm about to park the bike and Tunda just comes up that road. Anyway. I'm just going to push my bike down that road and uh, we're going to leave it there for the night. And that's, that's it for the day. Done. Wow, Amritsar, wow. The city with the golden temple. Let's go explore.